wanted to go over another patent with you that was released last week. This is about the thermal management system, the, basically the cooling, heating and cooling loop. So just some things I made note of that I wanted to share with you. I made a separate video that kind of talks more about the actual belly cooling. So this is more just about the thermal loop. So aerodynamic lightweight heat exchanger, including effective and efficient heat transfer. It talks about the drivetrain or the wheel motors that you see here. It talks about free cooling. Basically it's being cooled by the air because it's so close to it kind of passively cools it just from the air passing over it or near it, I would say, between the body and the wheels. The drivetrain system rejects heat to one or more aerodynamic heat exchangers. Aerodynamic heat exchangers eliminating or substantially eliminating flow separation occurring over the heat exchanger. Uh, figure 6B. Illustrates the enlarged view taken from the wheel assembly, including the cooling jacket. So some of this So what this says is just the three phase. This is the wiring essentially going to the motor. This is the intake and outtake of the cooling loop. And these are sensors for uh, basically the temperature and the, the wheel speed. And this is the flow rate. So it would come in here and they said it could change directions kind of depending on what's needed, but it will flow through here, go through most of the motor except for the electrical connection. So it does cover a good portion of the motor and then exits. So figure 13 is showing the schematic view of the water side thermal management system. So this is the water, essentially the solid lines. So it passes through all this. So it comes out of the motors, travels here. These are kind of connected and they pass down the side and come back. So it kind of seems like the, I guess the left side, if you're looking from the back of the vehicle, would be for the motors and inverters. And sometimes this is used as a, that lines the refrigerant or the AC just to help cool things as well. So it's just basically saying that if needed for necessary heat rejection, the as well as the drive chain, drive chain components without needing the chiller under all driving conditions. So it's designed to not use the chiller as far as the motors and inverters, which is good. So it's talking again about using some of the Benefit from free passive convective heat transfer to dissipate at least a portion of the heat generated by the motor. So it's just using the air to kind of shed some of the heat as well because it is partially open to the air there. And only the drivetrain system only requires a pump and not additional energy consuming devices such as fans. The efficiency of the motor is increased by the direct drive link cons configuration. So it's just in wheel motors are more efficient. I already talked about this. This is just talking about the flow path. So it's this loop here. Cooling jacket compromises the wheel, motor assembly, and inverter. This is just talking about the flow direction may assume either direction or not limited to the direction shown. So it's just referring to this here, this loop on the in-wheel motors from Ilafe. And these are the sensors, 867 and 8. So these are temperature and wheel speed sensor. So the motor, 850, which is just basically this whole unit here. Thus. 
um, available from multiple vendors such as a LaFe. The specific design of the motor is basically going to be an optimized version for Aptera. And each motor will produce about 50 kilowatts of power, so uh, we'll drive 150 kilowatts. So this is kind of interesting. So for example, a motor external temperature range of about negative 40 to about 65 C, so about negative 40 to about 150, is typical for the motor testing at full power. For a particularly aggressive driving, such as testing on a racetrack, the motors might exceed this limit, operating at a reduced power output from about 60 5 to about 85C and it will be basically reduced power so it's not really designed to be a race car but they did take it on the Formula 1 track and there was just one lap but they said there was no overheating issues over about 85C the control system shut the motors off so that's very hot Pretty unlikely that would happen, but that's kind of the limit. On the inverter, the upper temperature limit is about 75C, about 167, so that's basically what's supplying the power to the motors, and that's a little more in wheel. It's basically, let's see, in the hood somewhere, at least for these two motors. In the back, for its all wheel drive, there'll be an inverter back here as well. 852 is the inverter. Let's find that. So here's their inverters, 852. So one for each wheel. And then this is probably, I would guess, the, the rear wheel inverter here. A second benefit of the in wheel motors is the lower center of gravity, which increases their drivability. A uh, third benefit is in using direct drive in wheel motors, uh, reduced or negligible concern of the motor overheating. And they kind of reconfirm that the vehicle consumes about 100 watt hours per mile. The Tesla Model 3 consumes about 230. This is over a standard drive cycle with the EPA. So the drive flow path, which is this right here, this pump. Thermically couples to each of the motors, actively removing heat generated by the propulsion of the vehicle. To maintain external temperature of the motor of about 65C or about 155, 150 Fahrenheit when providing full power. And keep in mind this is like full power, so if you're really pushing it like back to back to back, like racing it or drag racing it. If we're just around town driving or freeway driving, you want to really hit that limit. So basically the belly pan here, this is talking about the indentations can be formed by stamping or other manufacturing technologies such as brazing, welding, fastening, or bonding with thermally conductive adhesive. So figure 15 here, this is talking about the cabin and the battery pack. So this is mainly for the battery, for the motors and inverters. And this figure 15 is for the battery pack and cabin. So you'll see this is more centralized in the center of the vehicle, but also uses the, the side of the vehicle as well. So it kind of shares the systems. And this is, you can see this is mainly um, water-based for the battery and the cabin. You see some fans, so this is, fan. This is a compressor for HVAC. This is, I talked about this in another video, but this is mainly the underside cooling is not as effective under 10 miles an hour, so that's activated via the fan through the heat exchanger, so 630. So this loop right here it will start to use the HVAC to help cool things down if you're just kind of sitting still, essentially. 
So those are the main things that I've noticed on this one. It's, it was kind of interesting to see more detail on the Elafe motors or NWL motors, kind of how the cooling loop looks like and how things attach. You know, these are the mounting points for the wheel. So this is, I look these numbers up. So this is basically the inlet flows through here. This is the outlet. So kind of this in, out, in, out. So it kind of can flow in and out of these three different uh, systems. Let me know if you find anything else interesting in the stock. I'll link it in the video description. Catch you next time.